So welcome really to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we're going over some common GCSE Maths revision questions from taken from foundation papers on number topics. Now as always I'll include a link to the exam questions that we go through in this video as a link in the description and I'll also include some lesson links that go over the topics including this test so that if you do find that you're struggling with one particular topic you can just simply easily access the lessons to go through it so hopefully you would understand and cement your knowledge. Now attached is a copy of some exam questions taken from calculator and non-calculator questions which generally cover majority of the number topics. Now remember that this is not inclusive, it doesn't test you on every single aspect of all the number problems, it's just a small collection just to hopefully highlight any particular areas of weakness that you've got in this particular section. Now the questions that we're going to go through cover topics like inequalities, fractions, decimals, percentages, just basic general calculations, problem solving, place value, bid mass, factors, LCM and HCF, prime factor decomposition, which is also known as products of their prime factors, lists and outcomes, roots and powers, indices, fractions of amounts, fraction calculations, area involving pi, standard form, decimal calculations, percentages, unit conversions, money, estimation, rounding, error intervals, and problems involving upper and lower bounds. Now, the questions that we're going to go through are a mixture of calculator and non-calculator. It doesn't really specify which questions are non-calculator or calculator, but when it comes to revising, if you're not revising through past papers, I would always suggest try answer the question without using a calculator just to improve on your general numeracy skills but if you're really struggling then reach for a calculator obviously more complex questions will be using a calculator but if you do find you have got a complex question it will be worth more marks on a non-calculated paper because you will need to show for working out and that's really really important that regardless of whether it's a calculator or a non-calculated paper question i should say always look at how many marks were on offer to determine how much working out you actually need to show. Now again, a little reminder that if you're wanting a copy of these questions, all you need to do is just simply click on the link in the description and I strongly recommend you have an attempt at these questions before watching this video as we go through the answers. So let's get started on question one. So question one says circle the correct statement and the same thing applies with question two as well. So here it's just a case of testing our knowledge of decimal numbers and inequalities. Now remember with inequalities the arrow always points at the smaller number or that the crocodile eats the bigger number. So it's just a case of making sure that you're aware which number is smaller and which one is bigger. Now with these decimals I always prefer telling my students to treat it as money because that makes more sense because a lot of students comprehend money. So here we're looking at 7 pence and 70 pence which is 0.7. So here we're looking for where the arrow is pointing at 0.07 or that the crocodile is eating the 0.7. So here our correct answer is going to be our third option. Moving on to question two, so this is a mixture of decimals and fractions. So again, we want to be pointing at the smaller one. So here I would either convert 0.3 into a fraction or 1 over 4 as a decimal. Personally, I think 1 over 4 is going to be a lot easier. So here I can just cross that out and just write 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 and 0.25. So here I'm comparing 30 pence with 25 pence. Now 25%, uh, 25 pence rather is smaller, so the correct answer is going to be our second, first option. Moving on to question three, it says work out 43 times 8 minus 234 divided by 6. Now, although this is a set of mixture of non-calculator to calculator, I personally would say that this is going to be a non-calculator question. So what we need to do is separately work these amounts out. Now, there are several ways of multiplying, and as long as you get it correct, they're not going to really be bothered about which method you choose. So here I'm just going to go for the column method. So I've got 8 times 3, which is 24. And then 8 times 4, which is 32, plus the 2 is 34. Then I've got to do 234 divided by 6. I'm going to use the bus stop method. So I've got 2, 3, and 4. How many 6s is going to 2? None. So I carry the 2. How many 6s is going to 23? That's going to be 3. Remainder 5. And how many 6s is going to 54? That's going to be 9. So here, doing the two substitutions, I get... 344 minus 39. Now again, I'm going to use the column method to subtract. So here, I need to make sure the top number is the same or higher. So I'll borrow one from there. So 14 take away 9 is going to give me 5. 3 take away 3 is 0. 
and 3 take away nothing is 3, giving me a final answer of 305. Moving on to question four, it says Kim buys pet food in 1.5 kilogram packs. Her pet food needs 0.8 kilograms of food each week. She wants to have enough food for the next 14 weeks. She already has two 1.5 kilogram packs. Work out the smallest number of packs she needs to buy and you must show you're working out. Now this question I would probably assume is going to be a calculator question. Although if it was non-calculator it would be a little bit more challenging and probably a little bit worth more than four marks. So for this, first thing we need to do is just make sure that all our units are the same. So here we've got kilograms, we've got no mention of grams, so we're looking good. So first of all, let's work out how many, how much actual pet food this pet needs. So for a two week supply, we know that the pet needs 0.8 grams each week and we're looking at 14 weeks. So that's going to be 14 times 0 0.8, which gives me an answer of 11.2 kilograms. So that's how much food the pet needs. Now she already has 1.5, two 1.5 kilogram packs. So she has two times 1.5, which is three kilograms of pet food. So she then she needs 11.2 minus 3, which is 8.2 kilograms. Now, the packs of food comes in packs of 1.5 kilograms. So the packs needed is going to be 8.2 divided by 1.5, which gives me an answer of 5.46 recurring. Now, obviously, you can't buy... 0.46 of a bag so therefore she's going to need six bags and that's the minimum amount she's going to need to supply the pet for two weeks moving on to question five it says circle the value of the digit five in 256,934 so looking at place value the five represents 10,000 so here we've got five times 10,000 which is going to give me my fourth option then says for question six, circle the value of the digit seven in 9.17. So this first one is a tenth, so that's going to be a, a hundredth. So it's seven times one hundredth, which is seven over one hundred, which again is our fourth option. Moving on to question seven, it says here are two calculations, and it, it's basically using bid mass. It says use the brackets and the signs plus, minus, multiply and divide to make the following calculations true. Now there are several combinations for you to get the full two marks on these particular two aspects. So again, I would probably go for the most common one. So for the first one, I'd go for four times four, which is 16, and then four plus four, which is eight. And if I divide those two answers together, I'm gonna get two. And for the second one, I would say probably the most common one is adding the first three fours, working out the answer, and then dividing. Now again, making sure you've got brackets. Now, I would say this is a non-calculator question. If you wanna check your answer, I would enter it exactly how you've done it with the brackets, with the uh, calculation symbols, enter it on your calculator. If it gives you either two or three, you're gonna get full marks for it. But like I said, there are several answers which you can do, but I would probably say that these two that I've done on screen is probably gonna be the most common. Moving on to question eight, it says students are put into nine groups. Five groups each have 24 students and the other four groups have an equal number of students. Altogether, there are 204 students. How many students are there in each of the four groups? So for this, again, a lot of problem solving questions in terms of this one. So again, the first thing we need to establish is how many students are there in the five groups of 24. So if I just write a little prompt so the five groups total is going to be five times 24 which gives me an answer of 120 now how i got 120 if it's on a calculated paper just simply type it into your calculator if not you'll have to work it out using uh, your preferred method now in terms of the next mark i then need to work out how many students are left so i'm going to take away that 120 from 204 so 204 minus 120, which gives me an answer of 84 students. Now we know that 
the next the other that's going to be the total of the four groups and we've got to divide this number by four because there's equal number of students in each of those four groups so then I've got to do 84 divided by four which gives me a final answer of 21 students Moving on to question nine, it says write down all the factors of 18. Now a factor is a number that divides into. Now again, in terms of the factors, all you need to do is just basically halve the number and then just go through the numbers and see what you can divide into. So one will definitely go into it. Two does, three does, four doesn't, five doesn't, six does, nine does, and 18. And again, a nice way of remembering these, if you start with one, you've got one times 18 2 times 9 and 3 times 6. It then says work out the common, the lowest common multiple of 12 and 15. Now again there's several methods in which you can choose but I would say the most common is probably just writing down the 15 times table or a few multiples and then 19 that carries on and then if I go for 12 I've got 12, 24, 36, 48 and 16 you can see 60 is the first number that appears in both so there is my final answer then for question 10 it says work out the highest common factor of 75 and 105 and again several different ways in which you could be um, show this you can either do a Venn diagram or you could do a factor tree personally I would say probably a factor tree is probably the most common so two numbers and again your starting numbers might be completely different but your end numbers should be exactly the same so I'm gonna go for 25 times 3 3 is prime 5 times 5 and both those numbers are prime and if I do 105 again I'm going to divide by 5 because it ends in a 5 and that's going to be 21 5 is prime and then 7 times 3 and both those two numbers are prime so if I then write 75 as 3 times 5 times 5 and then 105 as 3 times 5 times 7 and then all I then need to do is circle the numbers that appear in both and then just pick one list which is 3 times 5 so the HCF is going to be 3 times 5 which is 15. Now if you knew it straight away would you get full marks if I just wrote 15? Yes because that is the highest common factor. Another common factor you could write if I wrote 1 that will probably get me one mark if I wrote 5 that will probably get me one mark because although that is a factor it's not the highest common factor so that's where the marks are going to be allocated. Then for question 11, it says write 36 as a product of their primes. Now, if it's a non-calculator, I would suggest you do in a factor tree. So here I've got 6 times 6, and then I've got 3 times 2, circle those two, 3 times 2, circle those two. So here I've got 36 equals 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, and then writing them as powers, that's going to be 2 squared times 3 squared. Now, if I just left my answer like this then I'm going to lose a mark because the actual question does say to leave your answer in index form and index form basically means with powers moving on to question 12 it says a team of two players is picked from these people and they've got Amy and Laura in the females males we've got Eric Rob and Tim and it says the team must have one female player and one male player complete the list to show all possible teams. Now for this you want to do this systematically. So it started with Amy, it's given me one example. So I've got Amy and Eric, which is done. I then need to do Amy and Rob, and then Amy and Tim. Then moving on to the next one, I've got Laura and Eric. I've then got Laura and Rob. And then finally, I've got Laura and Tim. And there we go. So there are our five options. Again, you could have it in absolutely any order, but as long as they're different and you've got those five listed, you're going to get the full marks. Moving on to question 13. 8 says write down the value of the root of 100. So here you should know that 100 is a square number. So what times what gives you 100? That's going to be 10. Write down the value of 13 squared. Well, again, if you don't know what 13 squared is, I would recommend that you just do 13 times 13, in which you should have an answer of 169. Then for 14, 8 it says simplify 8 to the power of 20 times 8 to the power of 5. Now this is using the rules of indices. So when we're multiplying, we add the powers. So 20 plus 5 is 25. So the answer then is going to be A to the power of 25. Then similarly for question 14, it says we're dividing. So here we take away the powers. 
So it's going to be 20 take away 5, which gives us an answer of a to the power of 15. Then with brackets, what do we do here? Well, with brackets, we multiply. So here I'm going to have 5 times 20, which gives me a final answer of 100, or a to the power of 100, I should say. Then moving on to question 15, it says the water container is one eighth full. 45 litres of water are poured into the container and the container is now three quarters full. When the container is full, how much water does it hold? Now for this particular question, what we need to do is first of all, find the difference as a fraction. So we started off with one eighth and we're now at three quarters. So if I work out the difference, so I've got three quarters minus one eighth. Now, if this was on a calculator paper, I could just simply type into my calculator. If not, I need to get common denominator, so that's going to be 6 over 8 minus 1 over 8, which is 5 eighths. Now, it then says that 45 litres was poured into the container, so 45 litres equals 5 over 8. Now, the 45 litres is basically 5 parts, and 8 parts is the total. So if I take that 45 litres is 5 parts, so 45 litres equals 5 parts, then that means that 1 part is going to be 45 divided by 5, which is 9, so 9 litres. And if the total is 8 parts, so that means that the total capacity of the container is going to be 8 times 9, which is 72. Then moving on to question 16, it says D equals 4 fifths, E equals a half, and F equals 2 fifths. Work out the value of D plus E times F. So if I just simply substitute the numbers in, I get 4 fifths plus 1 half plus, uh, times, sorry, 2 fifths. Now, using bid mass, I need to do this bit first. So here, 1 half times 2 fifths. Well, I just multiply the numerators together, so that gets me 2. Multiply the denominators together, that gives me 10. So then what I'm working out is 4 fifths plus 2 tenths. So again, I need a common denominator. So I multiply the first fraction by 2, so that gives me 8 over 10 plus 2 over 10, which equals 10 over 10, which equals 1. So there is my final answer. Moving on to question 17, it says here is a quarter circle with a radius of 6 centimetres. Work out the area of the quarter circle. Give your answer in terms of pi. Now, in terms of a full circle area, well, the formula is pi times r squared. Now, here the radius is 6, so the full circle is going to be pi times 36, which written in terms of pi is 36 pi. However, I've only got a quarter of that, so I then need to divide that by 4. So 36 pi divided by 4. Now, here I just focus on the numbers. So 36 divided by 4 is going to give me 9. So then the final answer then is going to be 9 pi. So I can just cancel those down. So that's 9 and 1. So then it gives me a final answer of 9 pi. Moving on to question 18, so we're now moving on to standard form. So it says write 0 0.000583 in standard form. So for this, I underline the numbers, ignoring any zeros at the start. So I'm going to write this number 583 as a number between 1 and 10. So that's going to be 5.83 multiplied by 10. Now, because this is a small number, it's going to have a negative power. So then focusing on the decimal point of 5.8, I then just need to count the number of places I've moved it. So that's 1 two, three, four, so it's going to be to the power of minus four. Then moving on to question 18b, it says write 9.416 times 10 to the power of five as an ordinary number. So here I've got 9.416, I'm going to move the decimal point five places, so one, two, three, four, five, and I fill in the empty gaps with zero, so that's going to give me a final answer of 9.416, zero, zero. Then moving on to 18c, it says divide 7,200 7, million by 300. Give your answer in standard form. So this number right uh, in standard form is going to be 7200 zero, zero, times 10 to the power of 6. Now, millions is, has six zeros, so that's going to be 7200, zero, zero, and then I'm just going to write six zeros. Then we're going to divide that by 300. 
So then from here, if I cancel out the zeros, so can zero from the top, zero from the bottom, I'm left with this number. So then if I do some division, so I've got three divided by seven, two, zero, zero, and just be careful, you're gonna include all the zeros, like so. And then I'm just gonna do the division. So I've got three goes into seven twice, with the remainder one, three goes into 12, four times with no remainder, so I've just got the rest of the numbers in zeros. So the last thing for me to then do is just convert this number here into standard form. So that's going to be 2.4 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that's positive 7 because we have got a big number. Moving on to question 19, it says which is bigger, 0 0.38 or 38? Now for this, what you want to do when you're comparing decimals and fractions, you want to convert them so they're both the same. So you can either convert 38 as a fraction, or 0 0.38 as a fraction, or you convert 3 eighths into a decimal. Now for this, I'm going to go for 3 eighths into a decimal. So that's going to be 8 divided by 3, and I'm just going to add a few zeros because I know it's going to be a decimal number. So then from this, how many eights go into 3? Well, that's going to be none carry the 3. How many 8s go into 30? That's going to be 3. 24, which gives me a remainder of 6. How many 8s go into 60? That's going to be 7, which is 54, uh, 56 rather, with a remainder of 4. And then how many 8s go into 40? That's going to be 5. So 3 8s is equal to 0 0.375. So if I then convert, compare that to 0 0.38, the question is asking which one is bigger? Well, it's going to be 0 0.38. Moving on to question 20, it says, as a decimal, 11 over 40 is 0 0.275. Work out 33 over 400 as a decimal. Now, I'm going to assume that this is a non-calculated question because if it was a calculated question, you could simply type it in your calculator and boom, you've got your answer. So for this, what we need to do is we need to com just compare 11 over 40 to 33 over 400. Now, to get from 11 to 33, we need to multiply by 3. And to get from 40 to 400, I need to multiply by 10. So for this, what I need to do is multiply by 3. But then because the denominator is multiplying by 10, we then need to divide the answer by 10. So what I need to do is 0 0.27 times 3. And again, you can do that in any which way you want in terms of how you multiply in decimals. So here we've got 275 multiplied by 3, if I just move the decimal point 3 places that way, so here I've got 15, 21 plus 1 is 22, and then 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, so I move the decimal point 3 places, 1, 2, 3, so that gives me an answer of 0 0.825. I then need to divide this number by 10, so I do that by moving the decimal point one place to the left, so that gives me a final answer of 0 0.0825. Another alternative you could have done is recognize that to get from 11 over 40 times by something equals 33 over 400, well that's gonna be three over 10. Now three tenths is 0 0.3 so if I do 0 0.3 times 0 0.275 and again if you're good with your multiplying with decimals if I word that out I would still get the same answer so again two different ways of working this out and it's entirely up to you which one you choose as long as you show full working out and you get the right answer you're looking good for the two marks Moving on to question 21, it says Alice has four pounds, Billy has twice as much as Alice, Billy has two thirds of the amount Chris has, and the amount that Chris has has four fifths of his age in years. How old is Chris? So for this, what we need to do is first of all, let's just write down the facts that we know given in the question. So we know that Alice has got four pounds. We know that Billy has got twice as much. So that's gonna be four times two, which is eight. Now, Billy has two thirds the amount of Chris has, so two thirds equals eight pounds. So eight pounds equals two parts. So therefore, one part is gonna equal four pounds, and therefore three parts, which is the total, is gonna be four times three, 
which is 12. So that means that Chris is going to have 12 pounds. It then says that Chris has four fifths of his age in years. So that means that 12 equals four fifths. So from this, we know that four parts equals 12. So therefore, one part is going to be 12 divided by 4, which is 3. Now the total is 5 parts. So therefore, 5 times 3 is 15. Then moving on to question 22a, it says, On a Saturday, a museum has 175 visitors. 28% of them are given a question air. How many visitors are given the question air? So for this, we need to work out 28% of 175. Now I would probably assume this is going to be on a calculator paper. So if I convert 28% into a decimal, so it's not 0.28, multiply that by 175, I get an answer of 49. Alternately, you could have done 28 over 100 multiplied by 175 and you would still get the same answer. Moving on to 22b, it says on Sunday the museum has 242 visitors. Two elevenths of them give or given the questionnaire. Were more people given the questionnaire on Saturday or Sunday? So first of all, what I need to do is work out two elevenths of 242. Now again, if I just type that into my calculator of means times. So if I just enter that into my calculator, I get an answer of 44. So if 44 were on Sunday and going back to part A, 49 were on Saturday. Which day were more people get more people given the questionnaire? Well, the answer then is going to be Saturday. Oh. And there we go. Then for question 23, it says a builder has a pipe that is two meters long. He wants to cut lengths of 80 centimeters, 45 centimeters and 70 centimeters. Does he have enough pipe? You must show you're working. Now for this, what we've got is a difference of units. So here I've got centimeters and I've got meters. So what I need to do is work with the same unit. So here I'm going to convert two meters into 200 centimeters and I'm just going to be working in centimeters. So if I add these three amounts up, so I've got 80 plus 45 plus 70, which gives me an answer of 195 centimeters. Then if I compare that to 200 centimeters, well, yes, he, well, yes, the builder will. So the answer then is yes. Uh, moving on to question 24, it says, here is a sign for a car park. And it says for question A, Lucy paid £2.85 to park. How many hours did she pay for? So again, it's 95 pence per hour. So here we've got a conversion of units because we've got pounds and we've got pence. So 95 pence per hour is the same as 0.95 pounds. So then if I then do 2.85 divided by 0.95, alternately, I could have converted it into pence. So that's going to be 285 pence. So if I do 285 divided by 95, it's going to give me the same answer, which is three. It says, says, then says for question 24B, Lucy paid exactly £2.85. She used six coins and she did not use a one pound coin. Showed three different ways in which she could have paid. And again, the coins she could have used are either £2, £1, 50 pence, 20 pence, 10 pence and 5 pence. Now she didn't use a pound, so I can't use that. Now again, the three possible answers you can have and you can write the coins in any particular order is going to be £2, then 50 pence, then 10 pence, then 10 pence, then 10 pence, then 5 pence. Another combination you could have is 2 pounds, then 50 pence, then 20 pence, and then three 5, pound pe uh, three five pence pieces. And then for the last one, we've got 2 pounds, 20 pence, 20 pence, 20 pence, and 20 pence, and five pence and again you could have any of those combinations in any order you could also have the coins in different orders as well but as long as it all totals up to two pound 85 and you're using three different ways you're going to get the two marks moving on to question 25 it says use approximations to estimate the value of 9.9 .9 times 41 now what you want to do here is round to the nearest significant figure so this number rounded up is going to be 10 this number to the round, this nearest 10 is going to be 40. 
So it's going to be 10 times 40, which is 400. Then for question 26, it says use your calculator, work out the square root of 401 as a decimal. Write down your full answer on your calculator display. So if I just load up my calculator, which may take a couple of seconds, there we go. So if I just press square root 701, just close the bracket because it comes up on mine. And then all I want to do is just copy that number. So it's 26.476405.9. And just double check to make sure that I've memorized that correctly. And yes, I have. Then for question 26b, it says give your answer to part A to one decimal place. So again, if I round this number up to one decimal place, the number, the digit next to the four is greater than four. So I add one to the number previous, so it's going to be 26.5. Then for question 27, it says the height of a tree is 12 meters, correct to the nearest meter, circle the error interval. Now the nearest meter, well that's one, so if I divide that by two, that gives me 0.5. So then what I want to do is 12 plus or minus 0.5, which is 11.5 and 12.5. Now, it can equal this one, but it can't equal this one. So the correct answer I need to circle is going to be the first response. Then for question 28, which is our last question, it says to the nearest pound, John has nine pounds. To the nearest 50 pence, Ellie has six pound 50. Work out the maximum possible total amount of money. So looking at John, well, again, to the nearest pound, if I halve that by two, I get 50 pence. So that's going to be nine, sorry, uh, eight pound 50. And if I just write M, and that could be equal to that, and that's going to be £9.50. Now, in terms of the greatest amount, because it can't equal £9.50, it's going to be £9.49, so that's the maximum number. Then for Ellie, and let's just get a different colour for Ellie. So Ellie, her error bound is going to be to the nearest 50 pence. 50 pence divided by 2 is 25 pence, so if I add and subtract it from £6.50, that's going to give me 625 to £6.75. And again, it can't equal £6.75, so the maximum number is going to be £6.74. Then all that's left for me to then do, the question is saying, what's the maximum total? So if I just add those two numbers up, 9 plus 4 is 13. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 7 is 12. And then 9 plus 1 plus 6 is 16. So the answer then is £16.23. And there we go.